All right. I made it at 10.01. It's at 10.02 now. Uh, uh, nonetheless, we made it. We're here. How is everyone doing today? All three of you. <clears throat> For a minute there, I didn't think I was going to make it on time at all. But I did it. What are you doing this morning? Uh, beautiful morning it is. Uh, Thursday, rainy, crappy weather. <sighs> Tried to hit yesterday, couldn't get it done. Was going to hit the day, couldn't get it done then either. Just a just a tough feel sometimes. I don't know what you're supposed to do about it, but. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? Checking into the chat. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a quick one today. Uh, I'm trying to watch some of the Major World Series. We're going to go over some of that here in a minute. And then uh, we're going to have uh, my man CJ on. I was talking to him last week about the Mojo out in Columbus with the new uh, One Nation gig they got going. <laughs> Uh, I heard some pretty interesting stories, and I figured uh, who better to ask than the man that was there. So <laughs> we'll see what he has to say about all of it. What's up, Sammy? How you doing? There's CJ right there. What's up, my dude? Beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning, not... <laughs> Baseball is back, though, guys. Baseball is back, and I'm loving it. I am loving it. Listening from Lawrence, Kansas. Two league games tonight rained out for sure. Yeah, man. That's a, that's kind of a bummer. We were supposed to have a batting practice with uh, my league team tonight. I don't know if uh, it, what the weather is supposed to be like here throughout the day. Uh, I know it uh, rained overnight. I don't know if it's supposed to keep raining today. It's still kind of on and off raining right now. I'm misting. My numbers are going to try and get the field cleaned up so we can go hit tonight or not. I really need to test the shoulder out and uh, kind of see what it thinks about hitting some softballs. I still haven't done that. I was supposed to hit yesterday and we got rained out. Uh, I was going to try and play this weekend and see what was up with that. Just a little co-ed gig. Figured uh, it would be something good to uh, test it out in. And... Ended up getting stuck with some good old mandatory overtime at work, so that all kind of fell apart too. So uh, I guess we'll try and get some swings in tonight, maybe, and kind of see what happens with that. Yeah, Sammy, life is good, man. Life is always good. Life is always good, brother. Is anybody planning on watching any of the uh, Hall of Fame Classic this weekend? The, the conference boys down there in Florida. I wish. I need to reach out to, I don't know if it would be uh, the media source. Uh, like who hosts the stuff or if it would be you trip themselves about maybe like uh, hosting and uh, doing my own broadcast of some of the games like I would want to watch. If I'm going to sit and watch the game, why not broadcast it too? So... You know, I can just kind of share the experience. It's not necessarily like I'm wanting to use uh, their content for my exposure. Uh, it, it's more just um, I'm going to sit and enjoy it, so I might as well enjoy it with you guys because I'm going to talk about it anyway. And yes, the duel has started already. Um, but I'm going to get off here and get some get some games in. I even thought about just saying hell with it and just turning on the games anyway. I mean, there's, there's 10 of us sitting here watching. I mean, who's going to see that? Uh, you know, we're sitting here watching this stuff. But I just didn't want to take the chance and and be that guy. There was a guy that was doing that last year. Um, he was uh, watching his local team play in the, well, I think it was A A Worlds and B Worlds, I believe. And he was doing it for like a week. Um, he paid the login fee for the week. 
and basically just rebroadcasted the games for free for everybody. And, you know, like 30 or 40 viewers doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about uh, $10 times 30 or 40 people, I mean, that's that much more money that uh, the streaming service could have made. Yeah, you could make the argument of who needs the money, but that's, I mean, they're, it's, they're there to make money. They're doing that to make money. That's their living. So I get both sides of it. I get the side of it that, like, you know, just get over to 30 people, but at the same time, that's a good chunk of money that they missed out on. Um, and just then running the risk of getting in trouble too. But the thought did cross my mind to just kind of pull them up and see what's up anyway, or even just get on Facebook and see if I can find some like uh, free streams there. I know sometimes Utrip does uh, some of their free streams, but uh, being a podcast, I didn't know that that'd be uh, necessarily doable for, um, you know, a podcast is sit and watch softball. Cause I know some people like to sit and listen to this, uh, after the fact. So we'll, uh, We'll just kind of roll with what we got for now. I am going to look over the bracket and everything uh, just live on here because I do want to look and see who's playing today and kind of what things are going to line up like. And and if you guys are going to watch or thinking about watching, I could give you like the games that I think would be good and the games to watch for. Eric, you can't get into the U-Trip Live. Is that what you're saying? Really? Oh, what's up, Jorge? How you doing, man? Man, I love it. You know, I was telling, I was telling somebody the other night, uh, you know, the the podcast is, because they asked me how the podcast is doing, because I mean, I didn't realize, man, I've been doing this podcast for six years. That's just kind of crazy. I mean, I know it's been kind of hit and miss here and there, but for the most part, uh, it's been a, even a good solid five years of, of content. I really am enjoying this weekly thing. Uh, it's been pretty funny. Sorry, I can't read in a... <laughs> I, I can't read and talk at the same, at the same time. It's been pretty fun doing the weekly stuff. Uh, it's been challenging at times, but uh, I have been enjoying it. The B-Boy, who do you play? I, I'm assuming he's talking to me. I don't see anybody else in here. Oh, I see now. Okay. Sorry, squirrel. Oh, we got my authentic taco. I like that name. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, he, he must be from that Lawrence, Kansas area too. I keep meaning to make it kind of over more that way some more, but uh, it just never has worked out. I haven't played a whole lot of tournaments over on that side of uh, Missouri anyway. I could probably count on one hand the times I've been like west of Columbia to play softball. It's usually always uh, going east, like towards St. Louis. Yeah, I see you now. I think Taco. Oh, okay, Eric. You mean all the uh, the old Scott comments? Yeah, that's uh. There's always some gold in there too. Which I, I tell you what, though, it is kind of handy. Like I do like using the ch the chat room that uh, DW provides there. Just because uh, there are people that are there that'll sometimes comment the score and and uh, you know kind of give you a breakdown of what's going on behind the camera. Sometimes the things the camera doesn't see. So that's kind of cool too. But one thing I want to do just really quick, I, uh, I don't know, the, the mood kind of hit me. Let's see. Bear with me here for just a second. All right, so I'm going to play. Let's see if I can get it pulled up here. I'm going to play something for you guys. So college basketball kind of came to an end, and I listened to a lot of uh, sports talk radio on the way to and from work, and 
as it always does with college basketball, uh, people are kind of talking about some interviews and that kind of thing. And Jimmy V always comes up. The Jimmy V uh, Foundation and Jimmy V and Stuart Scott and all that stuff. And like this speech is something that I could watch a hundred times over again. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny though. I'm I'm afraid to play U trip stuff on my page and hear I'm about to play an ESPN video and probably get myself banned from YouTube. But um, I want to watch this video. I want you guys to watch this video. If you haven't seen it, uh, just sit back and enjoy. There's really nothing to see. Just just listen. Take in the message. Uh, it, it's a message a lot bigger than basketball, and it's something everybody can apply to life. Um, I'm gonna cut this music down. And we're going to get it going. If you've seen this before, sit back and enjoy. If you haven't, enjoy anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can't tell you what an honor it is to even be mentioned the same breath with an author, Ash. Um, this is something I certainly will, will treasure forever. But as, as uh, was said on the tape, I, and I also I don't have one of those things going with the cue cards, so I'm going to speak longer than anybody else has spoken tonight. That, that's the way it goes. Time, time is very precious to me. I don't know how much I have left, and I have some things that I would like to say, hopefully, at the end, I'll have something that will be uh, important to, uh, to other people, too. But I can't help it. Now when I'm fighting cancer, everybody knows that. Uh, and people ask me all the time about how you, you go through your life and how's your day. And nothing has changed for me, as Dick said. I'm a very emotional, passionate man. I can't help it. That's being the son of Rocco and Angelina Valvano. That just comes with the territory. Right? We hug, we kiss, we love. And, and when people say to me, how do you get through uh, life or, or each day, it's the same thing. To me, there are three things we all should do every day. We do this every day of our life. You're going to have, what a wonderful, number one is laugh. You should laugh every day. Number two is think. You should spend some time in thought. And number three is you should have your emotions moved to tears. Could be happiness or joy. But think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. You do that seven days a week, you're going to have something special. And so I can't help. I rode on the plane up today with Mike Krzyzewski, my, my good friend and a wonderful coach, but people don't realize he's a 10 times better person than he is a coach. And we know he's a great coach. He's meant a lot to me in these last five or six months of my battle. But when I look at Mike, I think we competed against each other as players. I coached against him 15 years, and I always have to think about what's important in life is to th think to me of three things, where you started, where you are, and where you're going to be. Those are the three things that I try and do every day. And, you know, when I think about getting up and giving a speech, I can't help it. I have to remember the first speech I ever gave. I was coaching at Rutgers University. That was my first job. All I, oh, we got some, wonderful. And I was the freshman coach. That's when freshmen played on freshman team. And I was so fired up about my first job. I see Lou Holtz, Coach Holtz here. What was it like the first job you had, right? The very first time you stood in the locker room to give a pep talk. That's a special place, the locker room, for a coach to give a talk. So my idol as a coach was Vince Lombardi. And I read this book called Commitment to Excellence by Vince Lombardi. And in the book, Lombardi talked about the first time he spoke before his Green Bay Packer team in a locker room. They were perennial losers. And I'm reading this. And Lombardi said he was thinking, should it be a long talk, a short talk? But he wanted to be emotional. He said, be brief. And this is what he did. He, he, normally, you get in a locker room, I don't know, 25 minutes, a half hour before the team takes the field. You do your little X and O's, and then you give the great Newt Rockney talk. We all do. Speech number 84. You pull him right out. You get, you get ready. Get your squad ready. Well, this is the first one I ever gave. And I read this thing. Lombardi, what he said was, he didn't go in. He waited. His team was wondering, where is he? Where is this great coach? He's not there. Ten minutes. He's still not there. Three minutes before to take the field, Lombardi comes in, bangs the door open, and I think you all remember what great presence he had, right? Great presence. And he walked in, and he just walked back and forth like this, just walk, staring at the players. And he said, all eyes on me. And I'm reading this in this book, and I'm getting a picture of this Lombardi before the, his first game. And he said, gentlemen, 
We will be successful this year if you can focus on three things and three things only. Your family, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers. And, he, like that. and the rest, they knocked the walls down. The rest was history. I said, that's beautiful. I'm going to do that. Your family, your religion, and Rutgers basketball. That's it. I had it. I'm, listen, I'm 21 years old. The kids I'm coaching are 19, all right? And, I, and I'm going to be the greatest coach in the world, the next Lombardi. And I'm ready. And I'm practicing out in a, right, right, right inside the locker room. The, the manager's telling me, you got to go in. Not yet, not yet. Family, religion, Rutgers basketball. All eyes on me. I got it, I got it. And now finally he said, three minutes. I said, fine. True story. I go to knock the doors open, just like the body. Boom. It didn't open. <laughs> I almost broke my arm. I was like, you know, it was one that didn't open. Now I'm down. The players are looking. You know, coach, get, uh, help the coach up. Help him up. You know? And now I did like Lombardi. I walked back and forth. Right? And I was going like that with my arm. Get the feeling back in it. And finally I said, gentlemen, all eyes on me. And these kids wanted to play. They're 19. Let's go. I said, gentlemen, we'll be successful this year if you can focus on three things and three things only. They said, yeah. said your family, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers, I told you. <laughs> I did that. I remember that. <laughs> I remember, I remember where I came from. It's so important to know where you are. And I know where I am right now. How do you go from where you are to where you want to be? And I think it, it, you have to have an enthusiasm for life. You have to have a dream, a goal, and you have to be willing to work for it. I talked about my family. My family is so important. People think I have courage. The courage of my family is my wife, Pam, my three daughters here, Nicole, Jamie, Leanne, my mom, who is right here, too. And, and, and that screen is flashing up there 30 seconds. Like, I care about that screen right now, huh? <laughs> I got, I, got, I got tumors all over my body. I'm worried about some guy in the back going 30 seconds, huh? You got a lot. Hey, phenomenal, buddy. Yeah, you got a lot. <laughs> all right, Dickie. Are you kidding me? Hey, nuts. I got, I just got one last thing. I urge all of you, all of you, to enjoy your life, the precious moments you have to spend each day with some laughter and some thought, to get your emotions going, to be enthusiastic every day. And Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great can be accomplished without enthusiasm, to keep your dreams alive in spite of problems, whatever you have, to be able to work hard for your dreams to, be, to come true, become a reality. Now I, I look at where I, I am now and I know what I want to do. What I would like to be able to do is to spend whatever time I have left and to give and maybe some hope to others. All right, Arthur Ashe Foundation is a wonderful thing. And, and AIDS, the, the, the amount of money pouring in for AIDS is not enough, but it is significant. But if I told you it's 10 times the amount that comes in for cancer research, I also tell you that 500,000 people will die this year of cancer. And I also tell you that one in every four will be afflicted with this disease. And yet, for somehow, we seem to have put it in a little bit of the background. I want to bring it back on the front table. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. And it's very important. And ESPN has been so kind to support me in this endeavor and allow me to announce tonight that with ESPN's support, which means what? Their, 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 their money and their dollars and they're helping me. We are starting the Jim, Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. <laughs> and, it's, and its motto is, don't give up, don't ever give up. And that's what I'm going to try to do every minute that I have left. I will thank God for the day and the moment I have. And if you see me, smile and maybe give me a hug, because that's important to me too. But try, if you can, to support, whether it's AIDS or the Cancer Foundation, so that, that someone else might survive, might prosper, and might actually be cured of this dreaded disease. I can't thank ESPN. 
enough for allowing this to happen, and I'm going to work as hard as I can, you know, for cancer research, and hopefully we'll be, maybe we'll have some cures and some breakthroughs, and I'd like to think, I'm going to fight my brains out to be back here again next year for the Arthur Ashe recipient. I want to give it next year. I know I've got to go. I've, I've got to go, and I've got one last thing. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. I thank you, and God bless you all. All right, so I don't know where that came from. Uh, I came across it, uh, you know, like I said, listening to ESPN Radio. Uh, and they got the talking about Jimmy V, got the talking about the speech and everything. And, like, I, I don't know. I just enjoy speeches like that, messages like that. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of, in a, kind of an inspiring thing. Kind of makes you stop and put things in perspective sometimes. Uh, I, I enjoy things like that. Um, in the kind of the crazy thing is, is, um, he passed very shortly after that message. Uh, but that message is something that, uh, people will carry for a lifetime with them. Uh, people that, you know, I mean, you don't even have to be a, a sports fan, a, a, a basketball fan and anything fan to take something away from that message. Um, sorry to get all, get all serious on you there. Uh, I'm going to get caught up with the chat here, cover a couple of things, and then we're going to bring on my man CJ to talk about the disaster that was the mojo. <laughs> um, so, Authentic Taco, again, loving that name. Uh, he wants to know uh, what I video edit with. Uh, I am using, what is it, Sony Magics, I believe is the name of it. I was using Sony Vegas for the longest while, and then... I finally broke down and started using I was using a pirated version of Vegas is what I was using. I was using it for the longest time. And then I ended up going with uh Oh gosh, can you find it now? Where are you at? There you are. I think it's my computer and I use it all the time. I like know where this stuff is at. Uh it's basically it's a Ran by Magics. Uh, it's Vegas Movie Studio 17. Um, this is basically the same thing that what what is referred to as Sony Vegas. Uh, this is the a non-professional. You could call this the amateur version compared to the professional version, which is like seventeen hundred dollars. Um, but this cost me literally not even a fraction of that. And I was just so tired of having issues with the pirated stuff. Issues after issues after issues. It is very easily user friendly. It is like eighty bucks, but depending on how much video editing and stuff you do, it's so worth it. Like I always thought, the professional version of Sony Vegas was, you know, what what you had to have and 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 everything else. I'm like, I'm not crazy with my edits. I don't do all kinds of crazy stuff and you know, like multiple camera angles and all that, all that crazy shit. Um, there's stuff on here that I'll never use, but I thought I needed the Vegas, you know, the the big dog version. And turns out. Everything that I did on that, I've done on this $80 program. And I've got uh, support now. It's one of those deals. They're just going to keep constantly updating it. And I will stay up to date. It's not like I've got to download uh, the, you know, go go find the pirated version and download it when the new one comes out. And if there's issues with it, I can't, uh, you know, submit a ticket to uh, the creators because it's like, hey, I got this pirated version in your software and it's not working. <laughs> that's uh, that's not exactly going to cut it. So, uh, no, I, I, I've been very happy with it. Like, this is... Let's see. Can I pull that up for you? Um, number two...
I'm gonna try and get it like a screenshot of this on there for you. Maybe we'll see what happens here. Or I could do this too. Uh, let's see, window capture. Nope, it's not gonna let me do it. Why won't you? I don't know. I'll have to tell you sometime. I'm not gonna sit here and and uh, waste your time with it. But uh, it, it's 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 pretty super, it, pretty super. I'm reading and talking again. It's it's super user friendly. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's been a been a good investment uh, to get the software and be able to benefit from, like I said, the constant support that it does provide. Let's see. Again, a couple more with the old chat here. Kind Master. I have heard of Kind Master. I believe that's one of the free softwares. Uh, what's up, Gabe? Thanks for stopping in and uh, checking out the podcast. Second time listening. Keep up the good work. Appreciate that, man. LRG75. Hell yeah, you made it. FLG Solo says, missed last week. Wish I had been there. Lots of mojo talk, and I'm an Ohio native. Played the tournament, too. Well, boy, I'm telling you what. You have got just the thing. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have CJ on here in just a minute. He was out there living that mojo dream. So uh, we'll, we'll see what he's got to say about all that stuff. Because I, I have questions. And I'm sure that uh, other people are going to have questions, too. Uh, if you were involved with it or, or familiar with the mojo and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I have thought about putting this podcast on other platforms. Um, as far as like putting it somewhere where the audio is, um, I, I could. I honestly haven't looked into it a ton. I, at one point, I was going to try and get it onto iTunes. And honestly, just kind of be honest, lost motivation with trying to get it on there. But if uh, it's something that people want to adventure more into, we can totally do that. I have considered taking it to Twitch. And the reason for that is, you know, everybody associates Twitch with video games. But um, there's all kinds of people. Twitch is a live streaming platform. It, it's obviously got a lot to do with video games. But there's people that use it for things like I'm doing right now. And one of the added bonuses that... Um, you can do with Twitch, at least on on an iPhone, I know you can. Um, you can close your screen and play Twitch in the background. So if it's something that, like you wanted to listen to this and not have your screen open or you know you just want to set it down and walk away and not worry about messing with the video or anything like that, um, you can totally just close your screen and uh, walk away from it. And you can even do the same thing later. You can go back and, and still catch it later. Um, I haven't decided what I want to do 100% there with that, but I have debated doing that as well. I could even go as far as using a second computer to push it to Twitch and still be able to be here on YouTube as well. Um, but as far as hosting it uh, somewhere like, you know, Podcast One or, or iTunes or anything like that, I haven't uh, researched extensively in quite a while. But I would like to, especially with the fact that like we're being more regular with this now. A <laughs> fans only podcast, <laughs> boy. That that uh, uh you, you I. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there, there's there's 16 of you here. It's a bunch of the regulars. I mean, we are basically the fans only. <laughs> oh, you're talking only fans. Oh, God. Nobody wants that. Oh, uh, yeah. CJ played in the C division uh, down there. And I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can get my man going live here. Come on. Pauses here, musics, and we're just going to fire it up. We're going to see what we get. Hello. My friend, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear Hello. me? My friend. Uh, let's do can this. Can you hear us? So, camera, can you hear me? Microphone. You want this one? I can. I can hear you on the podcast, yeah. but I can't hear you in my headphones. I bet you can hear me now, can't you? You want this one? I can. I can hear you on the podcast, but I can't hear you in my headphones. Well, it's like the biggest, me. biggest thing of inception I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, I gotta save it. All right, there you go. How's that? Nope. Nope. Still nothing. Um. Let's see. 
Well, this thing's going to be stubborn, isn't it? Save that. This is going to be aggravating. I guess this is why most of the time people just like, you know, call ahead and get this stuff set up, huh? Since I've done this a million times, I didn't write any issues. I don't know why it's giving me problems now. Let me see. Let's try this. Let's try this. Bear with us, guys. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Bear with us, guys. Mic feedback off. Mic off. <clears throat> All right. Mic feedback on. Mic on. All right, so let's try... Mic feedback on. Mic on. How's this, CJ? Can you hear me now? All right, so let's try... Mic feedback on. Mic on. How's this, CJ? Can you hear me now? All right, so... I can I can hear you on the feed again, but still not in the headphones. That's so weird. I heard you for a second. I can hear you on the feed again. Mic feedback off. Mic off. Mic feedback on. Mic on. Mic feedback off. Mic off. Mic feedback on. Mic on. Man, that's a lot. How about now? Still nothing. Nope. Let me try. Let me try to get some different headphones. Yeah. 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 Technology, guys. I just love it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I yeah. So um, it took me to get my in the integrity. I actually got the integrity too from a friend of mine. Um, he, the same guy that sent me the uh, Frankenstein integrity that I have not had a chance to swing yet. Uh, he ended up sending me that too. But I did order. Um, a integrity two from the website as well and got it. I mean, right away it was in stock. Anything you order for them, you have to make sure it's in stock hundred percent. I think I got you now. Can oh, you, you can't me? hear me now. Yep. Okay. All right. So I was trying a thousand different things. I, I guess it must've been, must've been something you. on your end, but I think we got it figured out now for sure. All right, sweet. So we got it. We got a couple people in here that were actually at the mojo last weekend. Um, so I got to know, first of all, um, my, my guy CJ played with New Breed, played in the C division, and would you ended up splitting for first place, is that correct? Yep. How many games did you play the weekend? We played 10 total. Oh my God. How many in a row? Uh, six in a row on Sunday. That is brutal. Why'd you end up splitting? Did they have to go two or? Well, they were only about two hours away, um, but by the time... We got done with the first championship game. It was close to like 9 o'clock, and it, that was scheduled to be at 6. So we were already three hours behind. Oh, holy shit. Um, and then, I mean, we had a six-and-a-half-hour six hour drive home. So um, just and we, had, we had guys having to get, get up for work at like 4 a.m. Sure. And so um, when we got out of the car, they went straight to work. So. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least they were cool enough to split with you, though. That's pretty cool, really. They were, they were. It was a, it was a really good team, that Nation Boys team. It was, it was a really fun championship game. A lot of uh, shooting the shit and ball busting going on against both teams, but all in, all in good spirits. So it was, it was a lot of fun. That is cool. So like the one thing that that frustrates me with like traveling to play tournaments is running in, going all that way to run into local teams. Did you run into that at all? We did not. This is like the first time that we didn't. Um, we've played we played the the Bush in the past, and we played Redman, and then we played Shell Shocked, and we we played Young Bucks last year. I think <laughs> we played all three of them. Um, That's so frustrating. We and we didn't. We played a lot of Ohio teams, uh, some teams from uh, up in New York and in Michigan, I think. So. It was good. A, a good change of scenery is good. I know, like the Sonic guys went to uh, Winter Worlds this past past winter. Ended up playing three local teams. Played, I think, uh, what was it, six games, and played three local teams. Like, what the hell's the point even going down there if you're just gonna play all the same guys? That's kind of crazy. 
and you figure like maybe even the director could set up the bracket a little different, but it sounds like that wasn't an issue for you guys anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of times we've, we've gone to places and played the same teams. It's like, come on, spread these teams out a little bit. Something. Yeah. So speaking of directors though, did you, did we have any personal interactions with the director? Did you all have to deal with them at all? Uh, no, not really. The only, we did. So they changed the bat testing location at the very last minute. So before our first game, we're like, okay, let's head to this tent, get our bats tested. Like, you know, like 30 minutes before, of course, guys didn't get down there early enough, but, uh, but then, so we're walking over, we've got 25 bats, me and, uh, Steve Robs are just carrying them. Well, then they tell us that they moved the bat testing place. <laughs> from the park. So luckily we found a cliff. He was driving a golf cart around, and he luckily gave us a ride up there, and we were able to get it in. But no, other than that, uh, we didn't have any interaction whatsoever. So. so what is it? I guess the One Nation, you can still use the old stamp bats. Is that, is that what I saw? Because I saw, um, what is it? He's dynamic softball on YouTube. Uh, his name's Davis Bellardello. He plays, uh, he, he's actually down in Florida playing right now. Um, I follow him on YouTube, and he was posting some of the games that he was playing from there. And it looked like people were swinging two twenties. I guess it was just you could swing whatever you wanted, stamp wise. Yeah, I think it's. I think even the two forties can pass at two twenty now um, with One Nation. That's I believe that's really? kind of their one of their things where they they kind of say sets them apart from U Trip. They say it's always going to be two twenty. So, so there was a lot of the what was it the hashtag. Fu3A hats and in, in, in shirts and everything I saw on Facebook was there really that much of that stuff down there? Because to me that to me that's kind of crazy. I didn't, I didn't notice it. Um, also, I mean, I don't I don't really stare at people that much, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I didn't notice it. I didn't see anybody, any of the directors or people testing mats wearing any of it. Um, so I, I didn't even know it was a thing until it, it came out on the plaque and. We were all just we were looking at it on the ride home, and we saw it on there, and it's like, what? Somebody was like, "What does this mean?" And I was like, "I mean, I guess it's F U Triple S A," but I was like, "I can't believe they put it on the plaque." That that is kind of wild. That's somebody said that they said it was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to go on there. Like, yeah, you, I mean, you open those plaques before you got to that field. You know what they had on them. I mean, come on now. Yeah, it, it, it's not a mistake to have it on. 15 different plaques one like three for each division so yeah it's just kind of wild but bold move by them we'll, we'll see uh i don't think i would mess with an organization that big as far as like legality standpoints goes but we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah i think they they've had legal stuff going on for for some years now so i think it's just stuff that's going to continue to happen but i mean personally from a from a normal softball standpoint i mean I probably said worse to people on the field, so not <laughs> I yeah. don't necessarily think it's that big of a deal. But from a sponsor standpoint, yeah, like was it giving uh, that plaque to your sponsor? I totally get right. Then you got to try to explain to them what it means, and then sponsor puts it up somewhere, and then they've got to explain what it means. I mean, it's just a, a situation some people don't want to be put in. Right, definitely, definitely. So it, it is interesting to hear, though, that. Uh, you know, it, it, social media is always good about uh, sharing the negative. All you read about is the negative things. You know, people made it sound like it was going to be an absolute shit show down there, and it sounds like it actually wasn't too bad. It wasn't. I mean, you know softball players. If there's something to complain about, they're going to complain about it. Sure. I mean, uh, you, we, want, we run our tournament. We never put out game times or a bracket until they walk up. People complain <laughs> so much about that. Um, but, I mean, I, I everything up until Sunday when they – got rid of the time limits. Everything was running ahead. We started our like nine forty five game at like eight fifty on Saturday night, which was awesome. Wow. Um it was yeah, everything was super far ahead. Um the umpires we, we really only had an issue with one umpire. The rest seemed to be do a really good job. Um a couple had tighter strike zones than you'd like, but Sure. Yeah, you've run into that anywhere. They were at least consistent in it so can't complain too much about that but no i mean from from a player standpoint at least from what i saw and what we experienced i thought it was ran very well so did you see or were you around the field everybody's been talking about it and it probably were it's getting a lot of the negative light uh the play where the, the base coach is running down the line with the runner were you around for that at all did you happen to see it or i'm sure you've seen it on social media somewhere by now 
No, I caught it. I caught it on social media. Uh, it, we were we we didn't leave the field on Sunday, so it's, we we played our first game at ten thirty, and we were on the field till like nine o'clock. So God, that's brutal. Yeah, so that was I guess on the other side of the park. Uh, that was I don't know what the hell that dude was doing if he didn't think there was going to be a play at the plate or what. But if I'm that catcher, I'm making it a fact to go out of my way to like run into that dude to make the umpire call obstruction or do whatever, or at least have my glove hand just in there ready for him to run into a punch in the face or something. <laughs> I mean, a clothesline, anything, right? Right. That was ridiculous. Oh man, that that's good. But I mean, yeah, you, you are right though. Um, that that was crazy. I couldn't believe. Like, it, it could go either way. I mean, you know, you could not call it because the run scored anyway. But fact of the matter being, like, the, the ball was not very far behind that dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah, he might have he might have scored it anyway. But it's yeah. I mean. He might have scored anyway, but still, it's just not something that you should be doing in in any softball game, really. No, I I agree. It's just interesting to see. You know, there was uh, even in that post, there was people whining about the umpires and and that kind of thing. And I mean, there's even a guy saying here in the chat right now on the podcast, um, saying that it's been way blown out of proportion. He didn't see any of the fu three a stuff either, because uh, the the way that some people made it sound like it was everywhere you looked. Like they were, there was even one guy saying they were selling shirts, and I did find that hard to believe. But yeah, I, I we we went into their their tents. I didn't see any of that um, being sold. Maybe they sold, you know, on a separate, maybe an online buy-in or something like that. But um, I I didn't see it advertised or broadcasted really, other than on the trophy. So. So what is this one nation? Is there going to be any of that around? I mean, is that going to be spread out just as much as U-Trip was? I mean, it's basically GSL rules, right? Yeah, that's what it is. So I guess Cliff, um, he was the creator of GSL, and then they, I guess U-Trip bought, bought him out, and they, they partnered together for some years, and I guess they had a falling out, which is why he decided to, to create one nation again. Um, there's like three tournaments in Missouri – there's a lot in Illinois. So one nation, basically, I don't know how they did it or what better offer they gave versus what U-Trip would have gave. But in Illinois, every single U-Trip director from last year is now a one nation director. Really? There's like six of them. Yeah. Wow. So, yep. So there's basically like no C tournaments in Illinois. A lot of basically all those dudes up in Chicago. There's a good amount of C teams up there, but none of those C teams are playing U Trip. They're all just playing One Nation. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, more power to them. I mean, if if it's right there to play, it's in your backyard, and it's going to be uh, essentially the same thing anyway. I mean, wh- why not, right? I mean, at the end of the day, sure. softball, softball. It doesn't matter if it's U Trip, ASA, or NSA, or whatever else. Right. It's it's the same people running it, and from my experience, at least, at least the Mojo. Um, and from what I've seen other places, One Nation's paying out a lot more money than a lot of these U-Trip tournaments are, and money talks. So that you're going to get the team if you're the team's in it if you're offering that kind of money. Absolutely, and especially uh, if they're if they're bat testing too. That's the thing that that kind of gets me sketched out sometimes when you come to paying out a lot of money. Is uh, if you know what I mean, people will do a lot of things to win, um, but at least the bat testing is going to curb at least some of that. Yeah. So it is It is good to hear that they're at least doing the bat testing and it's at least some of the bigger stuff too. Yeah, we we played the Mojo and we've got a, a few more One Nation tournaments in Illinois on our schedule. Um, so hopefully that's that's consistent with what they did at the Mojo as far as like payouts and bat testing and all that. As a pitcher, I definitely appreciate uh, the bat testing. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, as, speaking of pitchers, as, as being a pitcher, um, you know, we we did our, our react into the swings video thing. I had to throw some of your defensive clips in there. So, so let, let me pick your brain a little bit on some of this pitching game, if if I can. <clears throat> so, when it comes to uh, things like, you know, like some of the bang bang plays you make on the mound, like what goes through your head, like before, when you, like before you start your bat with the batter, do you have any any kind of certain mindset, or do you just kind of go with the flow? Uh, well, first thing I'm just thinking, like, please don't hit this at me. <laughs> uh, as much as I, I feel like I'm, I'm 
pretty good at, at fielding it, but I still don't want to hit it at me. I'd rather have the guys 50 feet behind me fielding it. Um, no, but, but really I, uh, I just really just try to pitch to my defense, right? So if we got a guy that's heavy pull and we've got our defense set up there, well, that may be his best swing. But that's where we have our guys set. So you, I don't, I don't try to be throwing, you know, deep outside pitches. Right, right. That way, same way. And I'll, you also just got to think of like the situation. Like, is this player wanting to push backside? Are they wanting to? Is there? Do we have a force out in play? Do we have a double play in play? Um, maybe just think about the yeah, bad save taken previously in the game, um, and just try to get a read for. If you throw this certain pitch, what are they going to do with it? Sure. Maybe, maybe you throw against your defense because maybe they'll try to hit that middle hole and roll over for an easy double play. So. Yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of one thing you know, being a pitcher as well. Like that, that drives me nuts sometimes is you know, you're pitching you're pitching to your defense. That's a big thing, and I think it's a thing that a lot of pitchers don't do. And sometimes the defense makes it hard to do that too. Like if you got a guy that doesn't want to listen or a guy that you know wants to not say anything and break on a pitch. Um, and and it, it's so frustrating to throw a pitch, get exactly what you wanted out of it. And you turn around and the guy was cheating the other way. Like, tell me that. So I don't throw the pitch there. You know, it, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, you, like you said, you got a guy say that comes up and he's pull heavy and you know, he, he's been just beating the ball down the line. You want to load up that side and then you throw the pitch there. You turn around and your dude's moving. Like, why are you moving? You didn't say a word about it. Like that, you know, at least you could approach that a little bit different. Uh, so I think that's one thing that like people, you know, listening, maybe getting, in, getting into pitching or maybe getting into a little bit of like the more uh, advanced like tournament softball stuff is like pitch to your defense, like let them hit it. Like if you, you pitch to that guy's strength and, and, and set your defense to, you know, make him comfortable, make him want to hit through that. And like you said, you know, you could also give that guy an opportunity to an opportunity to miss as well. You know, there's a lot of different ways you could go with that. If you got a guy that's um, absolutely wearing you out, doing the same thing over and over and over again, maybe that's your chance to give him a different look and kind of see what he does with it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> like we, we, we we had a guy last year uh, we were playing. Um, I mean, dude's cutting, just cutting the piss out of the ball. Maybe, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking like our – we, we had a third baseman to reach for the ball, and our left fielder caught it on a bounce, on a one-hop. I mean, this dude was just hitting the absolute seeds, just living over there. So I told him, I was like, go load up that side. I'm going to throw this dude outside and see if he's willing to do something different. Like, give him a giant freaking hole to hit and see if he wants to hit it. And I turn around, and my whole infield is terrified to go stand over there, which, I mean, arguably, you uh-huh. know, <laughs> arguably so. But at the same time, like, I'm trying to get this freaking guy out. I'm up here trying to get this dude to hit at me. And, you know, for, for the sake of you all, and you're not even moving. You know, it's just frustrating. Definitely. Def- it requires a lot of trust. Um, luckily, before, this will be my first, like, full year pitching. I, I've done it plenty in the past, um, but I've always played, like, on the middle infield. Um, luckily, I've, I've got enough guys on my team. One, I have a lot of – there's a lot of veterans that just know the game um, and offer, you know, a lot of advice and just knowledge. And two, a lot of guys, they all they all trust me and we all trust each other. So if one guy has an idea and, you know, says, hey, this guy's going to do this, pitch him here, you know, we'll go with that. Um, whereas same thing for me, if I'm on the mound, I'm saying, hey, this guy's doing this, let's just go here. Um, but it just comes down to having a lot, having trust in your teammates, um, just, just trying to do something different. And like you said, like that guy was tearing up the left side, you know, melting left fielders. Let's try to see, you know, great, he can do that. Let's try to make him beat us some other way. So Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I mean, it was it was to the point, I mean, it's one of those deals, I mean, he's getting the ball through the infield so fast unless it's right at someone, you know, they, they're not fielding it. And even then it's questionable, but, like, this dude has clearly shown he's comfortable. I mean, it literally it was the same spot every time. It was a six hole every time right through the six hole. So I told them, you know, go go load up in the six hole. I, I told my shortstop and my middle man, like, just go hold hands with the third baseman, and then I'm going to throw this ball outside and see what he does. And and I turn around, and the dude hadn't even moved. I mean, I get it. Like, the dude's hitting freaking seeds, but, like, let's try and get this dude out because he's freaking wearing us out. <laughs> yep, he'll miss eventually. Yeah, right, exactly. And, you know, that, that's where you try to capitalize on that. And, of course, you know, as, as you know, things prevail, like, nobody moved. I threw the pitch, and 
he again blew another ball through the six hole because nobody wanted to move. It's it's just frustrating, and it's nothing against you know teammates or dogging on anybody else. It's just um, the the message is listen to your pitcher, trust your pitcher. You know, you talk about trusting everybody. Like trust your pitcher. Like if if I'm play, if I'm playing the infield and my pitcher tells me to put my glove on my head and start doing jumping jacks, well, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look like an idiot, but that's what he told me to do. <laughs> yep. There was to do whatever. There's the, the pitcher knows where he's going to be throwing the pitch, or at least trying to throw it. Obviously, you know you're going to miss from time to time. But, sure. Um, yeah, pitcher has an idea of what they're what they're trying to do with the hitter, and hopefully they get the hitter to do that, and then have you set up in the right spot. Right. So, like, do you do you do any practice, like as far as like reaction or fielding or anything like that, or is it just kind of come to you naturally as far as that stuff goes, or do you practice, you know? Um, grounders or anything like that or, or anything of the sort as far as that I don't, I don't do a lot um what I, what I do the most is when I'm pitching BP I don't just pitch and just hide behind the screen like a lot of times I'll throw it and then get my fielding position behind the screen and act like I'm fielding the ball that's sure hit it. set yourself up to react um, yep so you're seeing that that speed off the bat but you're not putting yourself in that vulnerable vulnerable position um we also did a lot of times this winter with my buddy uh jared dooley he plays for uh, marathon redmen now um we, we'd swing the corn dog and this is a lot of times uh, my bu- another one of my buddies had my screen for the longest and so we, we'd hit without a screen well we'd just swing that corn dog and be like look if you want to hit up the middle hit up the middle i'll be ready for it you're right so, uh, we do that, and uh, luckily neither of us got blown up or anything like that. <laughs> we're both we're both littler guys too, so um, we're not hitting absolute rockets like some of these other really big guys do. But um, that that was some good practice too. Yeah, even just even just seeing the ball off the bat sometimes is more beneficial than anything. Definitely. <laughs> it's uh, just, it's, I got a guy in the chat here says, uh, "Just don't let the ball hit the wagon." Did you see the clip of the dude? Um, hit the ball off the, the the wagon full of softballs behind the screen and it came up and got the dude right in the junk. Did you see that video? Yeah, I saw that one. It's funny because <laughs> we I have a wagon just like that that we use and uh, we've had a, we've had balls hit off of there and, uh, and not not like that obviously, but now I'm definitely gonna make sure I have. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think twice anyway. Oh, for sure. So, uh, like when it comes to you, know, we we t- we dis- you and I discussed earlier um, this morning. Do you ever watch like you know the majors going on down there at Florida? You ever watch that and try to pick up anything that they do or any of the movements or strategies that they do? You ever try to pick up any of that? Yeah, so I was I was watching some of the major this morning. I was watching uh, Dan playing classic glass. I was watching him and yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Willie Do- Willie Dooley and Sonny's, they're probably starting here soon or they've already started one of the two. Um, really, the, the, the things I've watched the most, I've watched Mooch some um, just to, to work on my fakes and, and other stuff like that. Uh, I, I really feel like the most beneficial thing that I've started to do is just go back and watch our live feeds and see like what I'm doing as a from a faking standpoint. Sure. It, telegraphing when I'm releasing the ball, if I'm like trying to jump in the hole too early and stuff like that. Um, that's really helped me a lot. Uh, even, even from Marty ball, I'd see myself, you know, I, I jump the hole a lot, which is great. Sometimes you over jump, which I worked on a lot at Mojo, but a lot of times, you know, as a hitter, you can tell when a, when a pitcher is like faking and knocking a pitch versus, um, faking. And, you know, you can't, you can't decide if he's letting the ball go or if he's still got it in his hand. Like there's some guys that are just really deceptive. Sure. And I just, I just try to get it to the point where when I'm releasing the ball, it's not like in sync with moving into the hole every single time where I give just a different look, try to mix it up where guys can't just get comfortable up there. Cause either way you're throwing an underhand, but any advantage you can get to just be deceptive and, and not allow them to guess when you're pitching is is just has helped me a lot. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. You know, you see people, uh, you know, watching the live streams or you know, like especially on Facebook. You know, when when stuff like the 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 uh, events are going on, and you know, people, oh, why is he pump faking? It's slow pitch. Just throw the ball. Like man, like anything you can do to give yourself an advantage, freaking do it. 
You know, when it comes to even like just delivering a pitch, you, you know, stepping back a couple steps off the mound and delivering a pitch just to give a little bit different of a, of a, of a look arc wise, like you don't have a ton of things you can do to make someone miss. So do everything you can to make them miss. Uh, it, it's just kind of funny. Like, you know, you talking about Mooch, Mooch really likes to play head games with people too. You ever do any head games? You ever mess with any of that? Uh, I really, uh, try not to, cause I'm just really just not trying to piss the batter off. <laughs> uh, give them enough reason to try to hit me. Sure. Uh, I mean, hit hit the hole all day. Uh, there was a guy we played in a tournament in Freeburg, Illinois. Real nice kid. He hit a ball. I don't know how I got my glove down on it, but other it was going to hit me. Either hit me in the ankle or go between my legs or whatever. And he didn't run to first base. I'm like, dude, first of all, I know you're not trying to hit me. You're just trying to hit the hole. Run to first base. But, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to ever give anybody a reason to, to hit at me. Uh, speaking of that, you, you know Brandon Keene, right? Oh, yeah. Plays with Dudley. So he, he went to the Mojo with us, and he had our home run band. Well, the game we lost, this pitcher is actually pretty good um, with, with Extreme Associates out of Ohio. He's a, he's a really good pitcher. Um, this guy, he got a strike on Brandon. He put his glove down on the mound ah. and threw, threw a pitch. And backed up without a glove in his hand and we we're all like this guy is crazy because brandon <laughs> if if he if he had missed the inside corner and obviously the pitcher told him he goes look i was throwing it either a foot inside or on the inside <laughs> on it. otherwise you weren't getting anything and, and brandon i guess he said he the guy walked over and was talking to him he said if you threw that outside you were dead so, <laughs> well, was so, like, did brandon like take exception to it or did he just kind of roll with the flow no, Brandon. He ended up. He threw it inside. And I think he he hit a sink, a rocket through the six hole. Um, but yeah, he was. Brand, I mean, Brandon's like, you can do that if you want, but it's <laughs> not the smartest idea. But yeah, no, I would, I would never do anything like that. I'm not. What call me chicken shit, whatever you want to call me, but I, I just think it's dumb. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, especially you know, I guess you know, being out there, you don't know who you're pitching to, but yeah, again, at the C level, like a lot of guys hit the ball hard, but like. Uh, Brandon hits the hits the crap out of the ball, man. That's not a guy I'm I'm trying to go up there and mess with. He uh, I can't remember where we were at. Like he he buzzed the tower on me just going through. We were in a four man. I think it was hotter than hell that day. Uh, so we were in a four man just trying to give the outfielders a break. And dude, he buzzed one by me. Like I was ready for it, and so then you have time to move. It, it's just like man, his ball gets on you quick. So to to be standing up there without a glove on, no thanks. Like right. I, I I've done some stuff before. You know where I'll, uh, I'll I'll cover my face. I'll cover my face with my glove and throw a ball. But you know it's one of the just like that pitcher did. Like I'm not trying to throw it anywhere close. Just just something to kind of make you at least think about it. Like it's funny. Uh, big Big Tim plays with the pandas. <laughs> I, uh, I I threw him a pitch. Yeah, I, I did that. I just to mess with him. I, I know Tim. Tim's played ball with me a little bit, and, and uh, I always talk to Tim every time I see him. He's a cool dude. So I I cover my face. I throw the pitch. Uh, intentionally inside like it was, wasn't was supposed to be anywhere close and the on-deck batter says don't you cover your face when you pitch to that man and then I, I threw him the next one and I Tim I think we ended up Google Earth and I don't Google Earth stuff that people hit very often but I, Tim hit this ball close to I think it was 420 feet I mean it was just an absolute bomb and I said don't you worry I said I was making sure it was inside because I'm not letting that come back at my face <laughs> right. yeah Tim man that, that dude's got some stupid fast hands um, he actually played uh, baseball with my younger brother, um, and he he would hit them. They played wood bat uh, summer league, and he'd just drop bombs with wood bats like I had never seen. Uh, it's, that, dude, that dude's got a stupid amount of power and just super fast hands. Super fast hands, super smooth hands. He's even good in the field. Like everything he does is just super smooth. Even being a big dude, he moves well. Like I I, I like Tim. I think Tim's a great ball player. And you talk about wood bats. Uh, we were at Sullivan. I think it might have been that same day. Uh, they're out of home runs. They'd been struggling uh, with some home run control because, man, sometimes when Tim swings the bat, he just hits the ball so hard. Sometimes it just goes out. Like there's, when you hit a ball that hard, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Oh yeah, yeah he sw- he swings hard every time, no matter what. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, he, he was up there with a corn dog, and you know, for, for those that don't know Tim, he, he he's a big lefty, and pitches outside. He kind of steps around it. And goes to push it down the line and hit it off the bottom of the fence with a freaking corn dog. Just like, man, what what's that like, you know? <laughs> yeah, we we played a wood bat tournament at BMAC uh, 
two years ago, and he hit it about a foot from going out at BMAC on God. top of it with a corn dog. So. That's, that's insane. I, I 100% believe that, too. Tim, if you're yeah. listening, we think you hit the shit out of the ball. Just don't hit it at us, please. Right, please. <laughs> elevate, elevate, please. You're right. <laughs> Well, listen, man, we're going to get this wrapped up. We're going to go catch some uh, conference stuff and everything else. Appreciate you stopping in and uh, setting, at least setting the record straight with some of the mojo stuff we heard and, and uh, sharing the experience. Congratulations on your split for first place. I believe I said what, what I say last time. You uh, you, you tied you for split, first. You split, split for, for first. Second. Yep. Or what up, something <laughs> you said. I, had to, I had to clarify that we got we split first place. Yeah, I, I remember getting corrected. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, uh, thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate it. We're uh, going to wrap up the podcast here and uh, catch you in the chat next time, my friend. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, everybody, th- say uh, thanks to CJ for stopping in. Super cool dude. Uh, glad to finally get him on the podcast. We've been uh, talking about you know getting together and, and getting on the podcast here for a minute, so I'm glad we finally got that all worked out. And uh, got, the, got the record at least set a little bit straight on the mojo. And dude's a super good pitcher, plays for a very good team. And to kind of hear some of his insights and approaches on things was pretty cool too. So I enjoyed that. Everybody say thanks to him for stopping in. We are going to wrap up the podcast and go check out some conference U-Trip softball. You can go over to utriplive.com and enter code BP Hero. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but you can go to utriplive.com. Uh, pay the one-time fee or pay the monthly fee and be able to check out some very good softball, good broadcast, and it'll be there pretty much all day. So with that being said, swing hard in case you hit it, guys, and we will catch you next time.